have asked uh, Hispanic friends. I didn't. Everybody in my world was of Western European extraction. No one spoke with an accent because uh, immigration had been cut off in the 20s or the 30s, so there had not been that element. Now, when I was a junior in high school, was when the um, busing, the school integration began. And now for the first... Desegregation. What did I say? Integration. Desegregation. Desegregation? Yeah. Okay. Totally different. Okay. Um, so that's when, when, when we started having uh, African-American students coming to our high school. Well, I became friends uh, with several of those students, mostly guys who, with whom I played football or basketball, ran track. And we had an athletic bus that would take the athletes home after practice. Uh, and for most of us, we'd be home in 10 or 15 minutes. But for the African-American students, it was way on the other side of town. So it happened that my brother and I had a car, and so um, I had to offer to take some of my buddies home. And it was my first time into that part of town. Uh, because we could go downtown and we didn't have to go through the black part of town. Well, when I, when I entered that, all of a sudden I become responsible for a new reality. Mm. It's like, wow, mm. these kids have got a very different experience. And I can see why they resent being at our school. So now I, I, I in, a, in a sense, my, my world, maybe it wasn't great, but from the perspective of the person who's, ex, who's experiencing this world, it seemed pretty nice. But, but, but I realize there is an America that exists that I, don't, I know nothing of. Now, as a, a follower of Christ, I have to wrestle with that. I could choose to block it out and say it's easier not to deal with it, but to say this is part of the world for which Christ died. This is the world that God loves. These are people who are made in the image of God. Why do they do that? Well, ask them. And I think that um, having been involved in racial reconciliation these last two years, uh, very intentionally, after Charleston, um, and, and hearing, hearing the stories of young black men whose worlds were completely different from my idyllic world. Now, I have a responsibility to that, and to realize that um, generosity is at the heart of, of God, sharing. So the things that I have, I realize I didn't do anything to deserve this. It was given to me. I have to steward it. And I think the, these are the areas where, um, e even for people who think about making America great again, it's a matter of we, we are part of a global family. So there is, um, I'm not saying that America was great, but, but it's, it's the conditioning. It looked pretty good to me. And so I think there are certain people who've romanticized a period of, of time where you know schools were good, communities were safe, um, families were united. Um, it was a different kind of an experience. And most people, our generation, of this generation, my children's generation, know nothing about that. Well, so, I'm, But yeah. I would also say, Emmett, that I do not like the language of, of make America great again um, because this is, America is not a planet or a country on a planet. I don't like the, the language of take America back. To me, that's very racist language. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say we have a responsibility to help our country move forward. How do we take America forward? Yeah, um, I mean, you know the, the the great. I always talk about America. It actually uses United States because um, I think that actually gives us the notion of the aspiration. Mm -hmm. That that the aspiration mm -hmm. was for mm -hmm. us to have United States, mm -hmm. and we haven't reached that yet, mm -hmm. right? And so in that inquiry of what does it mean to have United States. Mm -hmm. I'm still wrestling where the great piece was because mm -hmm. we haven't gotten there. Mm -hmm. And the notion that we can claim integration when actually it was desegregation, mm -hmm. right? Because those black students were bused into your neighborhood. Right. You didn't bust any people from your neighborhood right. into their neighborhood, right? right? So there's yeah. a balance of power there mm -hmm. that is unequal. So sure. the scales of liberty are a mm -hmm. little slanted. And then on the other side of town were, uh, were young black males and young Latino males and young people of color who were being sent off to the war, mm -hmm. right, because of the draft, mm -hmm. right? Um, while in this neighborhood, probably no disruption, people had access to go to college and, you know, Ivy League experiences, mm -hmm. which created a, 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 a notion for the uh, uh, access for wealth, right? Whereas folks were disrupted in their lives mm -hmm. to go fight for the country, mm -hmm. right? and don't have access to wealth, which mm -hmm. now we can talk about as generational wealth, mm -hmm. right? And so in that frame, I'm still trying to figure out 
how the God that was preached in that neighborhood mm -hmm. and how the Christ who was revealed in mm -hmm. that neighborhood equates to the same God that was on the other side of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and the Christ on the other side of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. they don't equate. Mm -hmm. Let me jump in here with a yeah. little bit of the conservative <laughs> uh, perspective on, you know, th those two issues, which I think, by the way, that would be a subject for an entire segment of our conversation mm -hmm. alone. I, uh, two things have intrigued me that you guys have mentioned. Mm -hmm. Number one is, you know, has America ever been great? Mm -hmm. And is America a great nation? Mm -hmm. And are we talking realistically about returning to that greatness, number mm -hmm. one? Or is that just a smoke screen mm -hmm. for something else? Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, you're, again, the deep concern for the downtrodden, for the powerless, for the voiceless, uh, for the poor. And uh, how, do we, how do we approach uh, that in a way that is uh, equitable, balanced, uh, nuanced uh, from a biblical perspective mm -hmm. and not turn uh, minorities and ethnic groups into kind of, a, and look at them in a paternalistic sort of way, mm -hmm. um, sucking out uh, from them their sense of responsibility mm -hmm. and agency mm -hmm. and their, uh, yeah. you know, their yeah. right to be critiqued as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and to be pushed, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to get some pushback as well mm -hmm. for their own responsibility, mm -hmm. our own responsibility, mm -hmm. to, you know, to push ourselves forward. I think these two issues that need, need to be really massaged and worked yes, through. Yes, and, yes. you know, the issue for, but let me just take one of them, which is, um, you know, the, the issue of the greatness of America. Maybe we can just stay on this for yeah. a little while before we finish. Uh, um, Okay, I mean, what do we mean? What do we mean? I, I would, what I would ask, number one, is what do we mean by great? Do we mean great in an absolute sense of the word? <laughs> um, great in the sense of uh, perfection and having achieved a level of excellence and moral uh, solidity um, that is unquestionable? Mm -hmm. Or do we mean great in the sense of a historical comparison of other kingdoms and other nations and other powers that have... Uh, journeyed through history, the Roman Empire, the, the, the English mm -hmm. Empire, um, you know, the Greeks or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the colonial powers uh, that uh, colonized Africa and uh, the Middle East mm -hmm. and the East and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, when I look at America, and again, I'm looking at it from the perspective of, a, of an immigrant and of, of a pastor who pastors immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my admiration for America really is uh, extraordinary. It's huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. I, I could be a white guy talking from, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, really talking about America. Mm -hmm. I, we love, um, I love America. Mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's a, an extraordinary nation. Mm -hmm. I think it has been so for many centuries. I think it has, its influence has been more benign than many other powers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that, 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 that have, uh, you know, uh, inhabited history. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just saw a movie. By the way, I'd love to get your perspective sometime about silence. Okay. You know, having <laughs> sure. been a, 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 a missionary. Yes. In, yeah. mm -hmm. I read that book 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and it's a fascinating book, and the movie is really interesting as well. But, um, you know, I love movies, mm -hmm. and, and they express some things. I just saw a movie about a uh, woman whose name I, I won't even try to remember right now, just recently. Uh, you know, uh, there's a scene in the movie, because she, she was an English woman who went I to... Um, uh, Tehran and who, who mm. uh, explored the Middle East and became mm. very influential, you know, in the Middle East. But uh, the, the part, there was a, there's a moment in the movie where Winston Churchill and a couple of uh, gen uh, English generals are sitting down uh, discussing how they are going to divide the Middle East mm -hmm. <laughs> for themselves. And they're talking about uh, what does France think and, uh, you know, uh, what does Germany think. Mm. The, the, the Arabs are just uh, pawns, sure. they, and yet their whole world is being divided mm -hmm. by, in a small table, mm -hmm. is being decided. Mm -hmm. And they're drawing like little kids crayons, yeah. or the borders of these different, which of course explains mm -hmm. all the, the head, headaches that we're mm -hmm. suffering right now yeah. in the Middle East, you know, as we Iran. divided things, yeah. all these names you know, arbitrarily for our own together, benefits, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it, the arrogance mm -hmm. and the exploitation and uh, just the sheer unilateral nature of how uh, these empires related to their oppressed uh, subjects. Mm -hmm. When I look at America, I see something a little more um, complex than that. Mm -hmm. I do see self-interest, of, yeah, of course. You know, I do see what Americans did you know, in Latin America, yeah. putting dictators in power because yeah. you know, it served American interests and seeing Latin America as their backyard mm -hmm. and the manifest destiny and all mm -hmm. of these different things. And yet, knowing about all of that, 
knowing about the Mexican-American War and how America just stole, and I, I think it's a, it's a well-known fact, almost half of uh, Mexico's territory yeah. mm -hmm. because it was weak, because they had just uh, become independent from Spain and they didn't have the power to defend itself of that large territory that they had had or they had for themselves all of a sudden. They stole Texas mm -hmm. and California and, you know, part of New Mexico and so on. And now the Mexicans who come in into those territories that were their own, their ancestral homes, now they're illegal. And they're criminals. And yet, you know, that, that territory was taken away by a criminal act of this nation. I understand all that. Get on that.